So here we are in Hall 4.1, the Ambiente Facebook Live team, Ambiente 2019. And we're in the Suizel uh, Fair stand uh, today. And we've got very special guests here. And we have a bit of a chat about what's on the table, a bit of what everyone does. But really, thank you very much, Micah, for having us here. Welcome to our universe. Great to be here. Thank you very much. And on my right-hand side is also Professor Charles. He re recently wrote a book. Can you please tell a bit of about the book, about yourself, and why we've got these glasses in front of me? What, what's going on here? Uh, uh, the book was entitled Gastrophysics, the New Science of Eating, Gastrologic in, uh, in German, as it was translated. Um, a book all about the psychology of eating and of drinking, and of the mind of the person doing the tasting, and all the factors kind of beyond the food itself, such as glassware, uh, crockery, cutlery that in, impact the tasting experience. The stuff that no one ever thinks about, well, lots of people think about, but very few people research psychologically, scientifically, and it's our job to come in and say, why do we put certain drinks in certain glasses, and what happens if we mix things up, as we have here. So mix things up. When we were pouring the glasses here, we're obviously in a, a very professional world brand. You've been around since 1872, and everyone in this room is looking at us going, looking at Micah, the head of marketing, pouring... <laughs> Coca-Cola into a wine glass and, and champagne into a, what's the historical background of that is, is it is it what why why have we ended up here being this being strange and not being normal to put a liquid into a glass so I think uh, it, each drink perhaps has its preferred or better receptacle and, uh, and where does that come from partly that's just a history culture tradition um, but beyond that I think there are also sort of psychological uh, effects at play so when we look at uh, glassware, we think both about those sort of cultural match and mismatch between the drink and what it normally comes in, but then also as you pick it up there, you might think about the weight, you might think about the balance of the glass. So that's a champagne glass, correct? Yes. And it, 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 think about the texture you're feeling. What, uh, is it smooth? Is it round? You've got a rounder glass here, a more angular one. Uh, we and others have done research to say uh, a glass like this will bring out um, certain notes more than others. So it's sometimes it's, some, it's, it's maybe historically come from a functional experience point of view. Yep. And maybe you say for the wine, might have a, a, a glass like this because you want the, the volatiles to be sort of captured in the headspace so you can enjoy them. Whereas for something like a sparkling water, there's not much of an aroma or bouquet to get, hopefully, in which case you can feel the glass closer to the rim. Uh, something also maybe about you know the, the temperature, I suppose. If you're going to be drinking this drink for a while, maybe you want a stem to hold it mm -hmm. so it doesn't warm up. Uh, the drink. Uh, and when he, he just mentioned the materials, obviously, do you guys have a specific glass to use, or is is there is there a, uh, the different types of glass, or have you got one type of glass at Swizen? Uh, we have different kind of uh, glasses, and uh, always use the glass for the th uh, right thing. So there are even different thicknesses. When I touch the edge of this one, it's very very thin. Um, very interesting. I think if we're looking at the Ambiente 2019, how has your experience been the last uh, 24 hours of everything going on? Are you seeing things that have inspired any, any new thoughts or a new book or any new inspirations? Uh, it's interesting to see sort of the range of materials and um, uh, solutions out there as you wander around the booths. Uh, the one I haven't yet seen but I'm looking forward to is a, um, a velvet feeling plate or coffee pot I think so very interested in, in, in unusual textures and unusual feels um, so a lot of a lot of uh, bright use of color and as sort of innovative I think shapes and textures on the plates in the glasses um, and maybe in the cutlery too because uh, yet last night I was I had the pleasure of meeting you briefly uh, in, in your after your presentation and one of the ladies was asking you about the the tablecloths and the and the, the fact you use a napkin to wipe away the food, the last contact is with a fabric. So we talk about sensors, sights, smells, and things like that. There's actually a room out the back here, which I'd like to go into with you guys, if you don't mind, uh, to have a bit of continue our dialogue in a dark room. Okay. Would you like to follow me? Let's go. Because I think that's, that's what makes these type of stands really interesting. It's about, of course, products and presenting products, but also creating an experience for the people who come to the stand. So when I come in here, it's a bit colder. Obviously, it's dark. Um, would that also, in your research, something, something you observed? Hello, everybody. We're just going to interrupt your, your viewing here. Sorry about that. This is live. It happens. Um, so when, I, when, when you speak about the taste changing through glass, mm -hmm. so you, the experience in the hand, um, sight and smells also and, and sounds play a key role too. Uh, that's right. I think every sense plays a role, both in the food or the drink itself, in this interaction with the plateware, the glassware. Uh, when, when I came in here, I couldn't help but notice we can see the wine being poured into the glass here, but what we can't do is hear that sound. And that's something I was talking about last night. It's important because those sounds, you can tell, 
something about the shape of the glass, uh, something about the quality of the contents, whether it's white or red wine, maybe you can hear the difference as it's poured into a glass. The temperature, all of these things are available to our ears, setting expectations, and unless you're thinking about those subtle sensory cues in when you design glassware, you may end up with a, 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 an unfluent or, or, or not idealised experience. Maybe there's some inspiration there for next year's stand, the moment when the, the sound goes down, you hear the glass being filled with the fluid. Very, very cool. Inspiration being created live at Ambienta 2019. Um, have you got any questions you'd like to ask the Professor before we leave? Uh, no, it was very interesting listening to you. I appreciate your time today. I know you're a very, very busy man. Uh, enjoy the rest of the Ambienta 2019. I'll maybe see you walking around. And check out the book. What was the book called again in English and German? Physics, the New Science of Eating, and in German, Gastrologic. I will be checking that out on my uh, lovely favorite Amazon uh, Prime. Thank you very much. We're going to cruise out the back here and check out. appreciate having us here, Micah. We'll see you around. Thank you very much. We're going to go and see what else we can find around the corner. So have a great day, guys. So I think as we've seen at the Ambient, it's not just about products on a shelf. It's about bringing the experience of those products to life in a, in a way which makes people remember you or even you show them something they didn't know before as in go behind the brands, because obviously behind a lot of these, these brands are stories, stories that need to be told, and stories that are actually very interesting for, for the people buying the products. Um, if you can get an image in someone's mind about your brand, you're, you're being, when someone's buying your product at the, sh at the shelf, that's in their mind. So obviously building brands is a very, very important part of selling products in 2019, the story behind the brands, behind the products.